Shalom guys, welcome back to another episode here at Jashav Your Ministry with Casa de Israel Yara. Thank you for being here. Like I always say, like, subscribe, share. With that being said, let's get started with this week's Torah portion. So, uh, we're going to study this week of the plagues, right? So, we're going to understand why in this week's Torah portion, the plagues are so important and why there was the first seven plagues are in this week's uh, reading right and so we start with Moses right Moses in Exodus 6 right he is uh, commanded to approach Pharaoh right and give the first uh, basically warning or make the first approach to let the people of Elohim go right people of Israel go and so he has to go with Aaron right and so Moses was chosen by Elohim to do this right Moses was uh, picked by Elohim to fulfill this mission. And so Moses explains, right, in chapter 4 or, or 4 or 5, right, he says that he is um, not suitable for approaching Pharaoh, right? Some say that he was um, uh, hard with lips, meaning that he, he used to uh, stutter. Uh, um, the Hebrew explains that he was uncir had uncircumcised lips, meaning that he wasn't not only morally prepared but he didn't think he was ritually uh pure to approach pharaoh and why is that pharaoh is believed to be a reborn uh, or reincarnation of uh, an egyptian god right so he's in a sense god himself to egypt okay and so in the context of an egyptian culture pharaoh is god or a representation of god right and so the only ones that would approach pharaoh were priests and so these priests were uh, circumcised right and so this was a sign of purity that will give them access to pharaoh right and so moses uh when he says he was he has some circumcised lips he's basically saying that he's not suited or suitable to approach god right in egypt like he's not going to be able to change uh, pharaoh's mind and so elohim chooses uh some specific words right to help Moses understand that he'll be with him, right? So before we get into the reading, we will do the Torah blessings. Blessed are you, Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to study the words of your Torah. Please, Adonai, our Elohim, that the words of your Torah are pleasant to our mouth and to the mouth of your people, the house of Israel. And that we and our children and the children of the house of Israel know your name and become students of your Torah for its essence. Blessed are you, Elohim, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all the nations and has given us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Amen. So, this week's Torah portion starts in Exodus, right? So, it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh, for under compulsion he will let them go and under compulsion he will drive them out of the land and then our, this week's Torah portion starts in verse 2 it says Elohim spoke further to Moses and said Ani wa'era right Adonai or Yehovah and I appeared to Abraham Isaac and Jacob as uh, Elohim Almighty but by my name the Lord I did not make myself known to them I also established my covenant with them to give them to the land of Canaan, the land which they sojourned. Furthermore, I have heard the groaning of the sons of Israel because of Egyptians holding them in bondage. I have remembered my covenant. Say therefore to the sons of Israel, I am the Lord, Yehovah, and I will bring you out of the, un, under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from their bondage. I will also redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great judgment and then i will take you for my people and i will be with you as your elohim and you shall know that i am the lord your elohim who brought you from under the burdens of the egyptians and i will bring you to the land which i swore to give to abraham isaac and jacob and i will give it to you for a possession i am jehovah all right so moses spoke thus the sons of israel but they did not listen to moses account under this uh this despondency and cruel bondage now the lord spoke to moses saying go to pharaoh and tell pharaoh the king of egypt to let the sons of israel uh go out of this land but now moses says 
Behold, the sons of Israel have not listened to me. How then will Pharaoh listen to me? For I am unskilled in speech, right? So this is this is where the the uncircumcised lives, right? And the Hebrew is is it says Arel, right? Which is an uncircumcised lip or uncircumcised, right? And so it was a sign of a purity, right? So he's saying, I am not suited to approach Pharaoh, right? Now, let's remember why Moses left Egypt, right? Moses left Egypt because he killed an officer defending his his brothers and then uh, he was afraid that he might get caught then Pharaoh found out and they wanted to kill him so he fled All right so this whole time he has been in exile because he ran away and he, because he had killed a, a, a general of the Egyptian army uh, defending his brothers so not only does he have that in his mind but now he is called to approach Pharaoh and not anybody can approach Pharaoh right because Pharaoh represents God to the Egyptians okay it says then the Lord said to Moses uh, and to Aaron give them a charge to the sons of Israel and to uh, Pharaoh king of Egypt to bring the sons of Israel out of the land of Egypt now and now it goes into the genealogy of uh, the heads of Israel and the Levitical priesthood now chapter 7 begins with the, the plagues right then the lord said to moses see i make you as elohim to pharaoh and your brother aaron shall be your prophet now here elohim is saying to moses right moses doesn't think he's suited for this and elohim says i have put you in the position of god right so you will represent me so in its essence moses it's god saying that he is delivering the message of elohim right so in a sense moses is a angel or as his original translation is a mala uh, malach meaning a messenger of elohim right aaron is the one delivering the message right and so this connection right says that moses will be god and aaron will be like a prophet given a message from god All right so moses speaks to elohim moses gives the message of elohim to aaron and aaron as a prophet delivers the message okay and so let's keep reading you shall speak all that i command you and your brother Aaron shall speak to Pharaoh that he let the sons of Israel go out of his land. When Pharaoh does not listen to you, then I will lay my hand on Egypt and bring out my hosts, my people, the sons of Israel from the land of Egypt, the great with by great judgments. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When I stretch my hand on Egypt, I will bring out the sons of Israel from their midst. So Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded. Thus they they did. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh. Now, here there's an encounter, right, in where the rods and the serpents, right? It says here that, Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, When the Pharaoh speaks to you, saying, Work a miracle, then you shall say to Aaron, Take your staff and throw it down before Pharaoh, that it may become a serpent. So Moses and Aaron came to Pharaoh, and thus they did, just as the Lord commanded. Aaron threw this staff and down before Pharaoh and his servants, and it became a serpent. Then Pharaoh also called for the wise men and sorcerers, and they also, the magicians of Egypt, did the same with their secret arts. For each one threw down his staff, and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's staff swallowed up their staffs. Yet Pharaoh's heart was hardened, hardened, and he did not listen to them, as the Lord has said. So, last week, Right, we understood that Elohim said that he was going to harden Pharaoh's heart, right? And so many people might misinterpret this, saying that Elohim is unjust, that he has manipulated uh, Pharaoh and controlled his heart, literally, and made this happen because this is the way that everything had to happen, right? Now, we will see now what it meant, right? So let's go back. So Moses doesn't seem fit he doesn't think he doesn't think that he's fit to approach the god of egypt right and so elohim says i will make you god to pharaoh right and so 
Pharaoh in his mind, right? If you really think about it, if Pharaoh thinks he's God, he has control of everything, right? Egypt is the most powerful empire. And here comes Moses, who has ran away after killing a soldier, comes back, and not only does he not address that he killed a soldier from Egypt, the first thing he requests is, I come from a God that is invisible, right? And why is that important? We will see. I come on behalf of a God that's invisible, that you do not know, Pharaoh, and he says that you got to let his people go and worship him, right? So in Pharaoh's mind, he's like, I don't know who this is, and I'm not going to not gonna do this, right? So the way that Elohim is hardening Pharaoh's heart is basically letting Pharaoh know that he is just a simple man and no God, okay? So... Is going to start uh, doing that as we speak. So it says here, the first plague. Then the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh's heart is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning. He's going out to the water and station yourself. Meet him in the bank of the Nile. And you shall take your staff, the staff uh, that, that was turned into a serpent. You shall say to him, the Lord... The Elohim of the Hebrews sent me to you, saying, Let my people go, that they may serve me in the wilderness. But behold, you have not listened until now. Now, let's take a step back. So, like I said, this week's Torah portion is Wa'era, or Va'era, right, in the Hebrew. It says, Ani Adonai uh, Wa'era. And Elohim spoke unto Moses, and he said unto him, I am the Lord, All right? And so, and he, and then the next verse, which I forgot to put here, is he appeared, which is is the meaning of what era, right? Ani Adonai is I am the Lord, and then what era is I appear, right, to Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob, right? So he's describing who he is, right? Right. So this week's Torah portion is outlined, right, is Elohim's Yeshua is most uh, Moses. Uh, the four steps of redemption. Moses expresses doubts on on Quran's about accepting his mission. Moses recommission. Moses expresses doubts again. The redemption begins. The first plague turns to blood. The second plague, frost converted to land. The third plague lies through the land of Egypt. The fourth plague, swarms of insects. The, first, the fifth, disease of uh, epidemic. The sixth plague, boils. The seventh plague, hail and lightning. Right. So, the ten plagues. Right. We're going to talk about seven, but the main ten plagues. All right. Why? So, First, to free Israel from bondage. Two, to show Israel that Adonai, right, was the true Elohim and creator. And why is this important? Because Israel has been in Egypt this whole time, seeing all these many gods and have assimilated with the people. So they need to understand the concept of one God, one creator. And then the third one is to show Pharaoh he is not Elohim. Okay? And that his Elohims and his gods are nothing. Now, this Torah portion starts with the contrast between Israel to Egypt, right? So Elohim now is going to start making a distinction between Egypt and Israel. Israel has a special calling to secure, uh, to, a, a calling to secure one Elohim and one creator of everything. Egypt worshipped and attributed their creation to many gods, especially nature gods, right? The first plague... Uh, blood on the Nile is uh, a judgment on Chabi, uh, Isis, and uh, Kinu or Kimu, right? Chabi, or you can also see it as Heb, Chab, or Chabi, was a water and fertility god who was popular through ancient Egypt, right? Chabi was the patron of Upper and Lower Egypt, right? So there was two, right? Upper and Lower uh, uh, on the Nile, right? In, in this capacity, he was described as twin deities named Hap Reset, like Upper Egypt, and Hap Met, Lower Egypt. These deities were depicted either pouring water from a jug, representing the inundation, right? The inundation that happened yearly, right? So that the Nile will flood, and then they were able to pick, pick their crops, and they would, do, they would be able to do their, their uh, harvest. And so... Uh, as God of water, he was often associated with Nun, right? The personification of a premier waters of chaos, right? In the Ogdo theology from uh, 
Heliopolis and was described as the husband of Nunet, Nun's uh, wife and female aspect, right? He was also associated with Osiris because of his link to the Nile and fertility. As a result, Isis was sometimes considered to be his female counterpart or his wife. Now, Isis is an ancient Egyptian goddess associated with the earlier goddess Hathor, who became the most popular enduring of all Egyptian deities. Her name comes from the Egyptian Eset, which means seat, which referred to her stability, also throne on Egypt, as she was considered the mother of every pharaoh, mother of the gods, but was known by many names, depending on which role she was fulfilling at the moment, right? So she had different roles in different uh, aspects of the kingdom, uh, um, and how she was summoned as the goddess who brought the yearly inundation of the Nile, right? You see the connection to the Nile again, which fertilized the land. She was uh, Sati, the uh, mother of the gods she was, but was known by many names depending on which role she was fulfilling at the moment as the goddess who brought the yearly inundation of the Nile, which fertilized the land uh, was Sati. Oh, I repeated that twice. Eventually, she became associated with the sea and was pro protectress of sailors, merchants, and who were uh, ta talismans honoring her and invoked her aid uh, in times of trouble, right? So these two gods, right, deities, represented uh, uh, this um, amulet of luck or this represented the gods that they depended on for the, the Nile to flood, right? So they can have their crops, their inundation, they control the peace in the Nile, uh, their, their business in, in, in the port, right? All these things were represented by these uh, two gods, right? And then the third one is uh, Kenmu Ken or Kenu or, Ken, or, Ken, or Nen, Kenemu, right? Weird names. Uh, also, uh, Roman, Romanized Kenmu was often uh, the earliest known Egyptian deity, originally the god of the source of the Nile. Again, since the annual flooding of the Nile brought with it a slit in clay and its water brought life to its surroundings, he was thought to be the creator of the bodies of human children, which he made at a potter's wheel from clay and placed in their mother's wombs. He was later described as having uh, molded the other deities and he had the, uh, the titles Divine Potter and Lord of created things from himself, right? So remember, the river was the basis of the daily life. Uh, so many fish and crops were destroyed. Not only the gods were destroyed, but the economy of Egypt was destroyed as well, right? In Exodus 7, verse 17 through 18 say, Thus said the Lord, and thus thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Behold, I will smite the rod that is in my hand upon the waters which are in the river, and they shall be turned to blood. And the fish that are in the river shall die, and the river shall become foul, and the Egyptians shall loathe to drink the water of the river. Right? Here we're seeing that these gods had a representation, right? So the Nile, right, was in a sense Elohim killing or taking a judgment on these gods that they believe controlled the Nile and were so fruitful. Right, so the message that we read here, right, it says, says uh, verse 20. So Moses and Aaron did even as the Lord commanded, and, the, and he lifted his staff and struck the water and what, that was in the Nile and, and in the sight of Pharaoh, in the sight of his servants, and all the water was in the Nile turned to blood. The fish were in the Nile died, and the Nile became foul, so that the Egyptians could drink water from the Nile, and the blood was thought throughout the land of Egypt. But the magicians of Egypt did the same with their secret arts, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them as the Lord has said. Right? So we see that Elohim is giving him a chance. He sees the judgment on their gods, and then when he sees that his sorcerers are able to do the same thing, his heart hardens, saying, I have, I have no fear of this God because we do the same thing he does, right? So in a, we're starting to see how Elohim is hard in his heart, right? He is being stubborn. He's not paying attention to the messages that Elohim is trying to send. So 
we'll keep reading and see how Elohim is, is testing him, right? So chapter 8 starts with the frogs over the land, right? Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, they say, The Lord, again, Elohim is giving him a chance. Let my people go, that they may serve me. But if you refuse, let them go. Behold, I will smite your whole territory with frogs. Right? The now will swarm with frog, which will come up and go into the house and into your bedroom and on your bed and into your house of servants. Right? So. Right? The second plague, the frogs. Right? Is a judgment on the goddess Hecate, the frog goddess. Hecate or Hecat, Heket, was a goddess of childbirth and fertility in ancient Egypt. She was depicted as a frog or a woman with the head of a frog. The meaning of her name is not certain, but possibly derived from the word Heka, meaning ruler or uh, scepter, right? The frog symbolized fruitfulness, a new life, and it's thought that her priestesses were trained midwives. The second plague was a judgment on this goddess and every house in Egypt was filled with frogs and they died rotten and were piled through the land, right? So this is what the text says, right? So when we go here, right? It says, so Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt and the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. The magicians did the same, right? Verse seven, with their secret arts, making frogs come out on the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron said, entreat the Lord that he removed the frogs from me, from my people, and I will let the people go. Right? So here is Pharaoh saying, I will let the people go. Just get the frogs out of the way. But the magicians was able to do the same thing. Right? And Moses said to Pharaoh, the honor is yours. Tell me when I shall entreat for you and your servants and your people that the frogs be destroyed for you and your bro and your house, that they may be left only on in the Nile. Then he said, tomorrow. So he said, might be according to your word. All right, so Pharaoh gave his word that he was going to let the people go. Then Moses went out of Pharaoh, and Moses cried to the Lord, right? So Elohim gave him a chance. Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh said, okay, I'll do it. I'll give you my word. Then Moses pleaded for uh, Pharaoh, right? And then the Lord did according to the words of Moses, right? Verse 13, and the frogs died out. Of the houses and the courts and the fields so they pile them in hit right so remember this is a judgment on this goddess right so they see right they worship this goddess right you, you see the meaning of the frogs and then now all these frogs not only are, are filled through the land sent by the god of moses right and now they're dead and rotten and, and, and stinky in the land representing the total opposite of what they believe the frogs represented, right? And so it says, But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them. And the Lord has said, right? Or what the Lord has said. So, again, we see how Pharaoh is being stubborn, right? And he doesn't want to listen to Elohim, right? So verse 16 says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth that it may become uh, gnats, right, or, or, or flies, or right, through the, all of Egypt. They did so, and Aaron stretched out his hand with his staff and struck the dust of the earth, and there were gnats and, and, and on men and beasts. All the dust of the earth became gnats through all the land of Egypt. The magicians tried with their secret arts to bring forth gnats, but they could not, right? So now their magic wasn't working. So there were gnats on men and beasts. Then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of Elohim. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened again. He did not listen to them as the Lord has said. Now the Lord said to Moses, rise early in the morning and present yourself to Pharaoh as he comes out of the water. And said to him, thus says the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me for if you do not let my people be go, behold, I will send swarms of flies on you and your servants, on your people and on your houses, right? So Elohim is giving him a chance, right? 
right? The third plague, the judgment on the on the God desert, right? On the God of the desert, right? Set, God of the desert. Set, also known as Set or Sutek, was the Egyptian god of war, chaos, and storm. Brother of Osiris, Isis, and Horus, the elder. Uncle to the Horus, the younger. And brother, husband to Neptune, Neptis, right? So these are all gods that they believed in. His other consort was the goddess toward it hippo headed deity who uh, presided over the fertility and childbirth he's one of the first five gods created by the union of geb earth and newt sky after the creation of the world his name is usually translated as instigator of confusion and destroyer and he was associated with disorder foreign lands and all people and and the color red right now here the 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 the, the the warning that Elohim gives a Pharaoh, right? He gives him a, a second chance. He says, I will send flies on, on your people, right? And he says, right, order any animals, right? Um, as I was searching for um, uh, this plague, um, this was the best that I can do and find of information, right? If it's incorrect, I apologize. I will correct it uh, if you find something better. But... It says, ordinary, ordinary animals may not seem so useful at first, but aspects of their behavior were uh, channeled in a positive way, right? Take the humble fly, for example. The fly symbol was used to, at the end of ancient Egypt, a uh, word for it, insect itself, and to mean to fly. Uh, flies were also worn as protective amulets, as well as symbolizing persistence, Soldiers were awarded golden flies by the pharaoh as reward for heroic efforts in battle. In addition to symbolizing resistance, ancient Egyptians also believed that wearing a fly beat and amulet will protect them against disease. They took the dangerous aspects of the fly's behavior to cause disease and use it instead as a positive, uh, protective mechanism. Right. So in other words, Elohim took the flies that they believe was an amulet of protectiveness, of, of, of safeness, and he distributed through the land, right, controlling this belief that they will be relieved by these amulets, right? So Pharaoh is, remember, Pharaoh thinks all these things are true. He believes that he depends on these things, right? So every time he says, uh, no, no, I'll do, you, I'll do what you say, right, he's already, he already know he has, a hundred different gods that he believes in that he can depend on, right? So Elohim is going one by one, destroying every deity that he believes can protect him, right? And so he says, uh, verse 21, for if you do not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies, right? And the house and, and, and they will dwell, right? But on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen, right? So he, this plague is the first, one of the first ones that show a distinction between Israel and Egypt, right? So this, you know, the, the impact of the flies was only in the land of Egypt, but the land of Goshen in Egypt was not hit by these flies, right? So now Elohim is starting to make a contrast, right? Comparing, right? Who is a real God, right? Is the real God the one that is saying that, I will send the flies or Pharaoh who believes that he can control all these things, right? And so Israel is, is spared from the flies, right? It says here, I will put a division between my people and your people tomorrow. This signs will occur. And the Lord did so. And there came great swarms of flies into the house of Pharaoh and the house of his servants. And the land was laid a waste because of the swarms of flies in the land of Egypt. Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron and said, go sacrifice to your God within the land. But Moses said, it is not right to do so for we will sacrifice to the Lord our God. What is abomination to Egyptians if we sacrifice with what is an abomination to Egyptians before their eyes? Will they not stone us? All right, we must go three days journey into the wilderness, sacrifice to the Lord our Elohim as he has commanded us. Pharaoh says, I will let you go. All right. And so he says, I will let you go to the wilderness. Right. And says, make a supplication for me. Right. Then Moses said, behold, I'm going out from you and I shall make a supplication to the Lord. All right. Depart from, when Moses departed from Pharaoh, his servants and from his people tomorrow, only do not let Pharaoh deal deceitfully again 
and not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. So Moses went from Pharaoh and made supplications to the Lord, right? So Moses lets him know, don't lie to us again, right? And the Lord did as Moses asked, right? So remember, here Elohim is giving him a chance, another chance after another chance, right? And Pharaoh is depending on, you know, a, a plan B all the time, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, right? He just has so many gods, so many things that he depends on that he is, he's trying to get away from this judgment, right? But Pharaoh, again, hardened his heart this time also, and he did not let the people go. Now, Egyptian cattle, right? The Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh, speak to him. Thus says the Lord, the Elohim of the Hebrews, right? He makes it a perfect distinction. Let my people go that they might serve me. For if you refuse to let them go, I will continue to hold them. Behold, the land of the Lord will come with a very a severe pestilence on your livestock which are in the field on the horses and uh, on the donkeys on the camels on the herds and on the flocks but the lord will make a distinction between the livestock of israel and the livestock of egypt so that nothing will die of all who belongs to the sons of israel then the lord set definite time saying tomorrow the lord will do these things in the land so the lord did these things on the next day of the livestock of the egyptian died right so the fifth plague was the judgment on the cattle on the goddess Hathor. Hathor, an ancient Egyptian religion goddess of the sky, of women, and fertility and love. Hathor worship originated in early dynastic times, right, third millennium. The name Hathor means state of Orus and may not be her original name. Her principal animal form was the cow, and she was strongly associated with motherhood, right? So she was represented of the cattle the sky right all these uh uh representations that was going on right this guys that they're dependent on, on on to maintain the cattle maintain the the livestock right that they had elohim was judging them basically letting pharaoh know i am the elohim right and the lord said to unto moses go on to pharaoh and tell him thus said the lord right this is what we read and so, and Pharaoh, so it says, verse seven said, and Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was no so, no no such, so, there was not so much as one of the cattle of the Israelites dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was stubborn, and he did not let the people go. Right. So here, after the cattle right uh, of the Egyptians dies, right, Pharaoh sent spies to check if the cattle of Israel, right, or the Israelites had died too, and he sees that. The word of Elohim is being fulfilled. He's honoring what he said. He said that the Egyptians' cattle will die and the Israelites' cattle will not die. Right? So Pharaoh, again, hardened his heart because he cannot understand that he is not God and that he's not in control. And he is not obeying the creator of everything. All right? The sixth plague, which we'll get into is uh the plague of boils right in egyptian mythology sechet right the goddess sechet uh also spelled sechet 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 or whatever is a warrior goddess as well as a goddess of healing she's depicted as uh, a lioness she was seen as a protector of the pharaohs and led them in warfare upon death uh, sechet continued to protect them right and to uh, uh the afterlife right uh also this is a judgment on I isis right again and she became the goddess of all people uh of egypt male and female royal and common alike along with her husband osiris he thought he taught humans the arts of agriculture medicine institute by practice of marriage right so this is a judgment again on these goddess right this these representations of gods in egypt that they depended on right so why am I talking about these gods? Because we see plagues, but the Egyptians are seeing these amulets, these figures of power in their life being completely demolished by our, our Elohim, our creator, right? The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, take yourselves handfuls of soot from uh, a, a, a kiln and let Moses throw it towards the sky and the side of Pharaoh. It, it will become fine dust over all of Egypt, and I will become uh, boils breaking out of the, uh, with sores on, on men 
and beasts through all the land of Egypt. So they took suit from a, a king and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it towards the sky, and it became bowls breaking out with sores on men and beasts. The magicians could not stand before Moses because the boils, for the boils were on the magicians as well as on all Egyptians. And the Lord heartened Pharaoh's heart, and he did not listen to them, just as the Lord had spoken to Moses. Then the Lord said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning, stand before Pharaoh, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, Again, let my people go, that they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues on you and your servants and your people, so that they, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For I by now have put forth my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence. You would then have been cut off of the earth. But indeed, for this reason, I have allowed you to remain in order to show you my power and in order to proclaim my name through all the earth. Still, you exalt yourself against my people by not letting them go. Right. So this is a confrontation. Now, remember, Moses is the one delivering this message through Aaron. So all that um, Pharaoh is hearing is from Moses and Aaron. Right. So Pharaoh is seeing all these things coming to fruition and he cannot accept that Moses is his God. Right. Because Elohim said, you will be God to Pharaoh. Right. Moses has destroyed everything that Pharaoh believes is a God. And Moses has represented God in his eyes. And so this clash of titans, in a sense, has shown Pharaoh that he is a, a man, but he cannot take it. He keeps on uh, trying to fight the uncontrollable, right? Keep on fighting, right? Everything and, and the demand that Elohim is trying to give him. All of this is because he wants his people to go. Because Moses doesn't even want the kingdom of Egypt. He just wants his people to be let go, right? So it says, the seventh plague is a judgment on the god, goddess Nut, the goddess of the sky, Osiris, god of the, uh, of uh, Cabo fertility, set the storm god, right? This judgment was on on these three gods, right? The hail, right? Behold, about this time tomorrow, I will send a very heavy hail. Such as has not been seen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Now, therefore, send and bring your livestock wherever you have in the field uh, to safety. Every man and beast that is found in the field and is not brought home when the hail comes down on them will die. The one among the servants of Pharaoh who feared the word of Elohim made his servants and his livestock flee into the house. But he who was paid no regard to the word of Elohim left his servants and his livestock in the field. Now the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward the sky, that hail may fall on the land of Egypt, and man and beast, and every plant on the field throughout the land of Egypt. The hail struck all that was on the field through the land of Egypt, both men and beasts. The hail also struck every plant on the field and shattered every tree on the field. Only the land of Goshem, where the sons of Israel were, there was no hail. Then Pharaoh sent for Moses and Aaron and said to them, I have sinned this time. The Lord is the righteous one. And I, my people, are wicked ones. Make supplication to the Lord, for these has been enough of Elohim's thunder and hell. And I will let you go, and you shall stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I go out of the city, I will spread out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease, and the hell will no longer, that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you, your servants, I know that you... Do not fear the Lord or Elohim. But the wheat and this. Uh, mm. So Moses went out to the city of Pharaoh and spread out his hands to the Lord. And the thunder and the hill ceased and, and rain no longer poured on the earth. But Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased. And he sinned again and hardened his heart. And he and his servants. Pharaoh's heart was hardened. And he did not let the people of Israel go. Just as the Lord has spoken to Moses. So, this week's Torah portion gives us uh, an understanding of 
Moses, right, and his state and where he didn't believe he was uh, equipped to fulfill Elohim's will and duty that he had uh, put upon him, that he had chosen him to do. And in a sense, we learn that Elohim sent Moses and Aaron as messengers of Elohim, as God representation, right, in the middle of bondage, all right. Some of us have Moses in us, some of us have Pharaoh in us, right? Some of us don't want to accept the calling, but we're called to honor Elohim in the world and to represent him in everything we do with honor and respect. And some of us are Pharaoh. We think that we have the answer to everything and that we have an amulet or we have multiple amulets that we can depend on time and time again. And it's not until Elohim judges us multiple times and puts us down right in our fight against his will that we listen and we say we have sin at the end of this week's torah portion we learned that pharaoh hasn't learned a lesson and so the next three plagues will determine the future of the land of israel and the future of the egyptian uh, empire this hangs in the balance of obedience to Elohim, the creator. Elohim proved to us and to the Egyptians that he is the only Elohim. And everyone in the last plague, even the Egyptians, that listened and acted upon the word of Elohim were saved. And everybody else was crushed by the hail and the, and the judgment of Elohim. So let's stay obedient. Let's stay consistent and let's just fulfill our duty to honor Him. And let's not depend on ourselves and our own might. Let's depend on Elohim in everything we do. Have a great week. Shavuot Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.